Hello everyone. Lena is cooking another Armenian dish for us today. That's correct. So hello everyone. My name is Lena and today I'll be demonstrating for you to how to make Armenian Lenten dolma, which we call Basut dolma. But it's hard to pronounce for you probably, so if you say cabbage rolls should be fine. Yeah, cabbage rolls is fine. <laughs> um, Lena, you told me they make a lot of different dolma in Armenia. Yeah, we have over 60 recipes. Actually, when I got into this recipe and I was reading a bit more, apparently the word dolma comes from ancient Armenian word doli, which means, which means grape uh, vine. Okay, so originally they were stuffed grape vine yes. leaves. And apparently uh, in our area, in my country, uh, people love this so much. Uh, but in the past, they used to, I have to mention, in the past, they used to do it with uh, vine leaves, obviously. Um, they use different fillings. So uh, every region is like adopted a different version of dolma, depending on their climate, geographically where they are located and their traditions. And Lena, is it true they have a festival of yes. dolma every year? Good, Kristen, very good. Uh, so uh, in Armenia from 2011, um, we have an annual Dolma festival, which we, which we call Uduli Dolma Festival. And I have a book here, which is from that festival, actually. You can have a look later on. Oh, OK. Um, oh, that looks interesting. Yeah, and I was lucky enough to be in Armenia in 2014. Um, and my cousin took me to this festival, which was really good because I got to try all the different types of Dolma free of charge. So they say try before you buy. <laughs> oh, try before you buy. That sounds excellent. So it's a spring festival. Yes, it is a spring festival and it's, it's been held in Armavi, even in Armenia. When I was in Armenia, Christmas in 2014, I got to meet the head chef of Armenia, who is actually one of the organizers of this festival. And Setrak Mamulian, if he sees me, hello, a big hello, and thank you for your tips, uh, because he helped me to get through this recipe. Because it's so different, every region does it differently. I needed to get one uh, original one, so we can build on that. And oh, that's, that's what I'm going to demonstrate for you today. That's fantastic. So we've got a few tips from the head chef of Armenia yes. to help us along, everyone, today. That's great. So I have fermented cabbage here, cabbage leaves, actually. Um, this cabbage has been fermenting for a week now, seven days. Uh, it probably needs a bit longer, 10 days probably would be a lot better, but this should be just as fine. So we are going to use grains today and uh, grain and legumes as well. So what I did, I uh, soaked this overnight. Um, we have chickpeas here, red kidney beans and have cannellini beans as well. Uh, normally, Lentils, you will not uh, soak them overnight they because they're easy to cook. Yeah, yeah so don't need as much cooking time. So an hour to an hour should be absolutely fine for this. Uh, and I soak uh, our packed bit of bulgur in water before we start it. So it's also in the water. So what we will do now, we will go ahead and saute our onions first. Okay, okay great. And I'm your sous chef, Lena? Yes, yes. Okay. Not only sous chef. You can be a master chef, Christine. Master chef. Oh no, that might be a step too far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to be so chef. Okay. Um, so we'll if you want to put oil. some, we to put some oil in there. Yep. You want to so pop, 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 pop that in? Thanks. So we have here three tablespoons, but if you would like, you can add more or reduce. It's up to your liking. Another thing which I'm going to tell you about, if you don't have time to soak your beans overnight or you just got home and you would like to make something like this, this dish, you can buy actually um, already cooked beans from the store or legumes from the store. It's just make sure they have no added salt. I'll just quickly show you. So it says here, no added salt. Okay, and if you bought ones with salt on it, you could just rinse, it. rinse them. Yeah, rinse them under around water and you should be fine. How is that all? No, it's, it's warming up, a little, warming bit, up little, little bit, bit warmer. Bit longer. Um, then I see you have a jar of cabbage leaves over there. So could you do the same thing? Use a yes. jar of cabbage leaves good if you question, need to. Good question, Kristen. It's good to have you here. Um, so we have these cabbage leaves here, which I bought from a great store. Um, welcome to buy it, but they have slightly vinegary taste. And in Armenian cooking, when we ferment the cabbage, we don't use vinegar. Okay, slightly different. If you get this one, 
because again, wash it, do the same thing, drain and set aside. Okay. Yes. Um, we well, are really good having all these little um, stores like shops where you can buy the bulgur and the cabbage and bits and pieces and they are reasonably cheaper than in a supermarket. Yeah, and making it yourself is even cheaper again. Yeah, yeah. so support your local stores people, I would say. <laughs> so what I'll do, Kristin, now, I'll just start mixing the legumes all together oh, okay. in the bowl while we're waiting for my show. Sure. Use the spoon. In Armenia, uh, after we adopted Christianity in the third century, um, it had huge impact on our cuisine as well because people were fasting for Lent. This will be before Easter and before Christmas, which actually falls on the 6th of uh, January. So New Year, which is on 31st of December, a New Year Eve. Uh, so during that time, we had to fast. So we couldn't have animal product on our tables. This okay, is so these dishes in. were created, created for the fasting for period. These dishes and the other soup which we showed, uh, it's a winter dish as well, so people okay. could have. But because fasting was going over 40 days, you couldn't have the same meal. So that's how all these... Um, <laughs> all, all these vegan-based dishes occur. Plant origin, yeah, dishes happen. Okay. and. Um, you said that this dish has a particular significance at Lent, that it's given as gifts. Yeah, so um, I wrote in a few books and I also discussed this with the head chef. Uh, so in the past this was uh, given to neighbours as offering for a good year ahead. Instead of taking a chocolate box, a bottle of wine uh, from South Australia, people would take dolma or dolma as we say it. So um, I have to also mention that dolma is very popular among other uh, nations like the Greeks, uh, the U Ukrainians make it sarma, which is very similar as well uh, in Turkish cuisine, Iranian, uh, Serbian and many others. So everyone has a different variation. Uh, people lived in the same area, so we all got something from each other. So that's why they have so many uh, varieties of dolma. This one is pasus dolma, which is for Lent. Okay, it's interesting that they have so many varieties. So I think you said they have over 50 varieties 50, of 60, dolma. 50, wow. 60 varieties. Um, we make dolma even with spelt, uh, with pomegranates inside. We also use dry fruit inside uh, different types, different regions. And, have diff different, and different vegetables. Yeah. yeah. That, that's Probably. interesting. Now, Lena, I think, I think that is the time, yeah, Kristen, ready. if we can. Time to um, put in the burger. Yeah. Burger. Which is so bulgur has been soaked in water um, and usually you cook it with onions to get all the flavours into bulgur. While we're waiting, Kristen, for the onions, I'll just go ahead and mix the herbs. Um, sure. And also, um, I was advised, like in, in the past, it was a must to have seven different types, uh, types of legumes and grains. So they would use cracked wheat or bulgur, whatever was okay. handy at home. Um, spelt, different types of beans, like red beans, white beans, whatever was available. I'm just going to add a bit just of chili, little, little, just a give, touch. Give it a bit of kick. So I put in dried thyme, dried okay. um, basil, dried mint. Mint is a must to have. It actually gives a nice flavor to the dish. Um, dried parsley and dill I mentioned so all together should be three to four uh, teaspoons okay so I need to keep stirring this so it doesn't yes. stick so if you're doing it at home by yourself maybe prepare the legumes in first advance. and have them yeah. yeah prepare in advance so next thing which we are going to do is to add this is homemade uh, capsicum sauce so I'm just going to add this Kristen now okay and you keep stirring Yep. So I have two to three tablespoons in here. And also we are going to add some tomato paste, which is salt free. So again, from the store, purchase the one which doesn't have added salt in it. Thanks, Lana. And I'm going to use some ground black pepper as well. So this is looking like a pretty hearty dish. You'd eat it for dinner. How many people would this serve? This would probably serve six to eight. 
Keep stirring this. So now I can feel well. this is starting to form a paste. Do you want me to just let that cook out? Yeah, a little bit longer. A couple of minutes should be enough. Christine. Okay, keep stirring or just yes. keep stirring? Okay. So this parsley have been washed and they are ready to go. As I mentioned earlier, we use the stems as well in our cooking. Not wasting anything. All the goodness is there. Lena, this is, is yeah. starting to feel like it's sticking. Yeah, Do we can turn it off. Take, yeah. take it off? Yeah. Okay, terrific. And you can straight add to this mixture, Kristen. Pop it in here? Yep. Okay, thank you. No worries. While this mixture is still hot, I'll just do this. So just give it a bit cook. Oh, okay, so the, the, the heat well. from the paste is going to mm -hmm. just leave just it for a couple lightly of cook it. minutes. I'm going to add fresh thyme just because I like it and it's available. <laughs> you normally would use dried herbs in Armenia in winter, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah, because we're in Australia and. We're fortunate we've got herbs all year round. We're lucky we can use fresh herbs. Kristen, can I ask you to stir this sure. for me while I slice some dill for us? Happy to do that. Thank you. And I can add this to that mixture as well, yep. Kristen. Pop that in. So as I was saying, we are not wasting anything. Um, so what we are going to do to get all this hard bits out and put place them on the uh, in, inside oh, of the stove. I, okay, so that the, will, the stalk you're going to put on the bottom of the pan? Because it will stick to the pan, so that way you will save your dolma oh, from sticking. sticking. That's so, very clever. Yeah. So in the past probably there were no non-stick pans, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so people had to come up with um, ways of not letting it to the pan no, and It's smart. It's, so it's using every, everything that... So you, you don't need fancy utensils um, to make this. You know, you can just have chopping boards, a bowl, good knife, mm -hmm. some spoons, a good pot, um, and you're good to go. Yes, yeah, so we can start probably wrapping. Here's One side of the leaf, as you can see, it's thinner than the other side. So these rough bits, uh, I even saw people pounding them down to get an even surface so they can roll. But what we are going to do, we are just going to use this bit and then chop from here. I'll leave this one out and the other different one. Probably we can put this in the bottom as well. For All the right, moment. so that's like a good inch of cabbage in the bottom of the pot. Or for those who are centimetres, good two centimetres. I'll leave this on the side so people can see. Just actually, Pasus Dolma, this Dolma used to be bigger size before. But if you are serving it as an appetizer, it cannot be massive size. We are just going to do small sizes today. Okay. But the original one was massive size. So one Dolma would fill you up. What, for one Dolma <laughs> per person. Okay. Yes. So I've I'm always just... associated cabbage rolls with Russian cooking. Um, uh, Russians use in their cuisine as well, um, but Armenians use dolma. Yeah, and, until and I cabbage. tasted Lena's cooking at work, I had never had Armenian food before. They have some delicious cakes. Hopefully, one day I will be able to show you how to make Armenian cakes as well. Yes. For this series, we're focusing on healthy, nutritious meals that you can use for a family. Like dinner. cakes. <laughs> Not like cakes. <laughs> is there a cabbage cake? I ask uh, myself. Well, if there is a carrot cake, Christine, it might be. Oh, that's true. If there is a carrot cake, so could there be a cabbage cake? Don't know we'd get a lot of takers, <laughs> Lena. We're just you placing just the rolls. Just stacking them ar yeah. around. So do you layer them up or you just put one layer in? No, you no, lay 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 layer them up. You keep layering yeah. them up. Keep layering them up. So what I would suggest, don't throw away these bits. Uh, just save it for like using in your soup. 
later on. Oh, it's just it. you will need to cook a bit slightly longer because that's the thicker part of the cabbage. Oh, that's a good idea, Lena. Not wasting anything. Well, Lena, mm. while you're doing that, I'm thinking yeah. Karen could come and give people some information about the Most health certainly. benefits of the food. Smells delicious, <laughs> Lena. Thank you. <laughs> what I'd like to just talk about today are your beans and lentils, your chickpeas, your burgal. You've got lots of beautiful whole grains and um, Mediterranean type foods and the Mediterranean diet is really probably the most recommended diet around the world for good health and longevity because they're all high in antioxidants, they're high in fibre, they're mm -hmm. high in protein, you've got a lot of plant protein through your beans, your lentils, your chickpeas and um, resistant starch which is good for your gut. Thank you, Karen. We can all think about that, and you're teaching us so many lovely things today. And I'm going to let Kristen come back and take over as your assistant and help out. I'm looking at the cabbage, but I'm also very drawn to that headband that you're wearing today. Is that Armenian? Yes, yeah, so that's the Armenian national flag colours, actually. Oh, is I, it? I decided to bring like a little vibe, something little from my country. So, Lena, what I'm thinking is you'll, you'll be popping this in, you fill it up to the top of the pot. Do you add anything else on top, like water or anything? Yes, so what we're going to add is um, water, but we're going to mix tomato paste with the water and then that. And also we're going to put some uh, dried fruit in it. Oh, wow. What kind of dried fruit have you got? So you can put plums uh, in, in, in there. Just take the seed out, just in case. So, Kristen, while we're waiting, can I ask you, maybe tip this water, uh, if you can. Put the tomato paste first and then add a little bit of water at the time. So, Lena, I know you're using tomato paste, but if someone didn't have tomato paste, could they use a passata or something you instead? You can use passata. Yeah, it's, it's very easy. Okay, that's great. All right, this is ready for you. Yeah. I'm just going to put some of our prunes or whatever you have at home. So some Prune, kind of dried, dried fruit. fruit. We used um, apricot as well. Oh, okay. Uh, Armenia is the motherland of apricot. Um, I love apricots. Apricots, yes. So you can put that as well. Another option of this dolma uh, is it, you can chop up uh, this and use in a wrap. So oh, in, okay. In the you filling. can put it inside or outside, outside, depending what you want. Depending on your liking. Very flexible. And I also I would like to add some ch chili just because I like that. Oh, you do love chili, don't you? Kick. So dried chilies, just a few of them. We are going to put this plate upside down. This way the dolmades mothers will not move in, in the pot. That's we don't want, otherwise they will become loose and we cannot take them out and eat it. So I'm just going to put this. You can also put like a uh, something heavy on it, but I think should be fine for like this Like a moment. weight. So like if people weight. had like an old weight from a preserving yeah. kit or something, that yeah. would be good. Now yeah. pour it around yeah. the outside. Yeah. Okay. And then we will need a little bit more water. A little bit more water. Okay. Yes. So the water should cover, just cover the plate. Okay. I think we might need a little bit more water yeah. yeah so you want the plate just covered yeah mm -hmm. and we'll put this on a low to high uh, to low to medium heat um, for probably an hour you mm -hmm. can test after 30 minutes 20 to 30 minutes um, and see if it is to your liking I like it cooked slightly longer so an hour should be enough for this yeah that's perfect. okay perfect perfect so we'll get back okay. to you to show how it looks like Dolma has been cooking for an hour now, so let's see how it all goes. Looks well to me. So what I'm going to do is to remove this plate, put it here, and have a look uh, inside of the dish. How it all looks on the plate. I like serving dolma with a bit of pepper sauce. It's really nice and it's common in Armenia to uh, garnish it with pomegranate seed. We use pomegranate a lot in our cooking and it's really good for you as well. 
and some dill. Be nice. And why not a little bit in here? And some of our dried prunes aside as well. Mm -hmm. Now you have it. Armenian basus dolma made with love from Armenia to you. Thank you. All cultures, regardless of where we come from, tend to use more salt in our cooking. To reduce salt in your food, it's a good thing to do it gradually. It's a bit like reducing caffeine as well as sugar. It's very hard to go cold turkey, so a little bit at a time. If you base your meals on as many fresh foods as possible, you'll find that you will avoid a lot of salt in your diet because 75% of the salt in the Australian diet comes from processed food. The reason that there is such high concern for salt, it, it's linked with hypertension or high blood pressure that I'm sure everyone has heard of. High blood pressure is directly linked to cardiovascular disease and to stroke. Consider other ways to bring flavour into your dish if you feel that the dish is not tasty enough. Think of your curry spices, your fresh herbs, dried herbs, to really bring out the flavour in your dish. And you'll see some of these examples in the recipes today with people using fresh rosemary and sage, garlic, the sweetness of onions cooked down slowly to add flavour to your dish. And all of these things will help give you the road to a better health. Mm -hmm.